when it comes to the college protesters roiling America's campuses and roiling America more generally, it's time for Americans and particularly their political class to pick a side. There are only two sides to this particular argument. There's one side that despises America and despises the West. And there's one side that really likes America and likes the West. And that binary decision is really not particularly tough. And you can see it happening on college campuses all over America. So I want to show you two clips right now. And you get to pick which side you think the American president ought to stand on. And which side you think the American people ought to stand on. So here is the first clip. The first clip is a UCLA protest spokesperson. UCLA is experiencing massive protests. They've occupied the center of campus, all the places where I used to walk to class. My wife used to walk to class. They've now occupied those. They're all wearing masks to hide their faces because they're not getting COVID outside. But this is the new uniform of the non-proletariat, the bourgeois revolution, the upper class to upper middle class young people who are incredibly privileged and are going to pose as somehow victims of Western society. The uniform is kafia and COVID mask, which pretty much says it all. Here was the UCLA protest spokesperson explaining that the University of California is founded on colonialism and is a violent institution. Uh, it's more than divestment as well. Um, I think um, given the fact that the University of California is founded on colonialism, um, it's inherently a violent institution. There needs to be uh, an addressment of U.S. imperialism and its ties to US, the UC system and how it perpetuates war and violence abroad. Not only abroad, but also here locally. Okay, understand what they are saying here. What they are saying here, the case they are making, is that the United States is bad. When they say that the University of California is founded on colonialism, what they really mean is that the United States is founded on colonialism and imperialism and exploitation and rape of the native peoples and all the rest of this garbage. That's what they mean. They mean the United States is bad. When they say that what's happening in Gaza is connected to this, what they really mean is just there is a coalition of people who are pseudo oppressed, who are losers in life, who have now decided that the American system, the Western system, meritocracy are bad. Anybody who is successful in the system has designed the system for their own benefit. This is the intersectional conspiracy theory taken to the nth degree. And what it really means is people who are the most privileged people in human history sitting on a beautiful campus at the University of California, the most beautiful time of year, outdoors, enjoying their lives on the public time because tuition is subsidized at UCLA by the state. It is a state school that taxpayers are paying for. And now Joe Biden wants to relieve the rest of these people's student loans that these people believe that they are the victims of American society, or at least they are standing in solidarity with the victims of American society. The complaint is not about Israel. You didn't even hear the word Israel once in that statement. The complaint is about the United States. So that's one side. They hate America. They burn the flag. They take it down. They put up the Palestinian flag because the Palestinian flag has become the rallying point and tip of the spear in favor of this perverse view of the universe. As I've said before, the reason that this has happened is because Movements, revolutionary movements need to show skin in the game. The way that they show skin in the game is they pick literally the worst victims, the people who are least sympathetic and declare that they have sympathy for those people, that those people are actually victims. It is why the Black Lives Matter movement was founded originally around the death of Michael Brown, who tried to shoot a police officer before he was killed by a police officer. Because if you could declare your fealty to a false narrative about Michael Brown, suggesting that he died at the hands of American white supremacy, well, then you could sell those people anything. And the same thing is true with regard to the Palestinian cause. The Palestinians are a perfect example of a group of people who have elected terrorists, who are sympathetic to terrorists, who support terrorism, who hate Jews, who hate America, and who have made their own bed. They've been offered everything and they've taken nothing. They've decided they're not going to take any deal over and over and over and over. Every dollar that has gone into Gaza has been used to build up a terror epicenter. And these people declare solidarity because, again, if you can declare solidarity with people who are obviously not victims and declare that they are, in fact, the victims of Western imperialism, well, then you can declare it about virtually anything. That is why the kafia and the Palestinian flag are a substitute for the American flag. That film that we saw from earlier this week over at City University of New York, where people took down the American flag and put up the Palestinian flag. There's a reason why Queers for Palestine is a thing, why you're seeing combined Palestinian and pride progress flags, despite the fact that these are mutually exclusive in practice. 
That's side A. And you can pick side A, but I can tell you those people don't love America. And then there is side B. And that is the protesters at the University of Mississippi, the frat boys who showed up to sing the Star Spangled Banner at all of these people who hate the United States. Here is a clip of that. Okay, so those are your choices. You can side with the frat boys at UNC who actually tried to prevent the American flag from being brought down. You can side with people like my friend Ami Horowitz who went to a protest at City University of New York with an American flag and got beat up for the privilege. You can side with the statue of George Washington or with the people who defaced the statue of George Washington. But you do, in fact, have to pick a side. And if you pick the side that hates America, you should be held accountable politically and otherwise for it. It turns out that you should, in fact, love this country. It is an amazing country. It is the greatest country in the history of mankind. And if you don't, then there should, in fact, be some public opprobrium for you. Doesn't mean you don't have a right to say these things. You do have the absolute right to say whatever dumbass thing you want to say. It's the United States of America. That does not mean that people have to look at you as though you are anything but a moral idiot. And these people are moral idiots. So let's talk a little bit about the coalition of moral idiots. Who is behind them? What exactly they are calling for? We'll get to more on this in just one moment. First, using the internet without ExpressVPN, it's like having a first aid kit but not keeping it stocked. Most of the time, it's probably fine, but what's the point of the thing? You get in a horrible accident, you look in there, it's empty. That would be stupid. Every time you connect to an unencrypted network in cafes, hotels, or airports, you're essentially leaving your personal data wide open for any hacker on the same network to access. Don't wait for a security breach to happen. Protect yourself with ExpressVPN. Your data isn't just data. It's valuable information that hackers can make up to $1,000 per person selling on the dark web. That's why you need to protect it with ExpressVPN. I love that ExpressVPN creates a secure encrypted tunnel between my device and the internet so hackers can't steal my sensitive data. It would take a hacker with a supercomputer over a billion years to get past ExpressVPN's encryption. ExpressVPN is extremely easy to use. You just fire up that app, you click one button, you get it protected. Plus, it works on all your devices, including phones, laptops, tablets, and more, so you can stay secure on the go. Secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash Ben. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash Ben. You can get an extra three months for free. Expressvpn.com slash Ben. That's expressvpn.com slash Ben. So over at UCLA, again, many of these protesters don't even know what they're talking about. And the vast majority of protesters who are talking about Gaza and Israel have no idea where Israel is on a map, have no idea where Gaza is on a map, have no idea what the river is or what the sea is or anything like this. But here's one of the more on UCLA protest leaders talking about globalizing the Intifada. Again, the Intifada means, a, it literally means a violent uprising, including mass murder of Jews. That is what Intifada is. These people want to globalize the Intifada because what they believe is that the privileged classes, meaning predominantly white Christian males, but also including Jews, also including successful Asians, that those people are in fact the victimizers and they must be brought low by everything up to and including violent intifada. Here we go. Long live Palestine! Long live intifada! Intifada, intifada! Now, you can say this is all virtue signaling nonsense and these are a bunch of idiots. And that's true. They are a bunch of idiots. In fact, how stupid are many of these people? Again, these are highly educated morons. And there, there's a reason a lot of these universities did away with the SATs. I promise you, a lot of these protesters didn't do amazing on the SATs. All right, let me just give you a piece of taped example of how stupid these protesters are. Here are some of these protesters in American college campus trying to charge the cops using pieces of cut out plastic garbage cans. It doesn't go amazing for them. Seriously, they were looking at police officers particularly these black police officers and accusing them of being the KKK because they didn't Man, want look, to look, look at these, look at these tool bags. They were trying to flip Top the bench press level, 75 pounds twice. On your screen right now. Did you see the guy run underneath And the, 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 look at these more. <laughs> he charges the cop and the cop just like pushes I mean, him over. What kind of obstruction are they getting? Crazy. Pathetic class of losers. Pathetic class. So you can side with those people. These are also the great environmentalists, by the way. So UCLA's encampment was cleared 
And um, here's what it looked like afterward, the UCLA encampment afterward. These are people who love the environment. That's beautiful. Taking look at that. Look, look at look at how they left the, the lawn in front of a Pell Library. Have gone through here and forced the pro-Palestinian demonstrators. Their sad little out. Hamas homeless camp. Oh, but look how they left it. A hundred people. They love the environment. They love it. During this operation. Took about now, two hundred people were in fact arrested at UCLA. What what I love is that they tried to create barriers with like plywood and zip ties. Honest to God, these people wouldn't survive five minutes in an actual zombie apocalypse. Amazing, amazing stuff. But the question really is who's behind all of this, right? And the answer is pretty obvious. The administrators and the faculty, the administrators and the faculty and outside agitating groups, some of whom are funded by actual terror supporters. So speaking of the administration and the faculty, again, as I mentioned yesterday, this is an inside outside game. The administration and faculty at many, if not most of America's colleges and universities are on the side of the people who despise the country. They are openly on their side. The New York Times has an entire piece called Taking Cues from Students, UCLA Faculty Members Join the Protests. At UCLA, a few professors helped negotiate with the university. At Columbia, they guarded the encampment. But not all faculty members are on board. In the dark hours of Thursday morning, as the police cracked down on the protests, faculty members were linking arms with students, allowing themselves to be arrested. It was one of the clearest instances of a little-noted fact of the student demonstrations against the war in Gaza that a small fraction of faculty members at UCLA, Columbia, and other universities have provided logistical and emotional support to the protesters. And now, here is, here's the thing about this. It is not a small percentage. Because, as it turns out, the administration is perfectly willing to allow the corruption of their own universities. Over at Columbia University, as David Bernstein is reporting, one Columbia professor told his own students, in honor of the protesters, I'm not going to give you guys finals. You all just got an A for the course. Meanwhile, at Rutgers, the Rutgers administration has now surrendered to the protesters, saying that they will allow them a hearing on whether the university ought to divest from companies that invest in the state of Israel. That is the same deal that was made over at Brown University. The same deal was made at University of Minnesota. Northwestern went even further. They said they were going to grant full tuition breaks for Palestinian students and immediate jobs to Palestinian professors. Why is the administration doing all this? By the way, Northwestern simultaneously decided to get rid of the Presidential Advisory Committee on Preventing Anti-Semitism and Hate. Why? Because seven members of the committee resigned because this anti-Semitism committee was a joke. They stepped down immediately because it turns out the administration decided to undercut them by making a deal with the student protesters. The faculty and administrators agree. The elites in our country do not like the country. The elitists in our country, they do not like the country. They think the country is very bad. They do not stand with the University of Mississippi frat boys who are singing the Star Spangled Banner and trying to save the American flag. They stand with the people who burn the American flag. It is perfectly clear that this is the case. And this is bleeding down into our public school system as well. According to the Times of Israel, hundreds of students held sit-ins at Chicago public high schools in solidarity with Palestinians in Gaza on Wednesday. Apparently, the school administrations have denied a request to hold a vigil after the October 7th onslaught, but allowed hundreds of students to participate in a January walkout along with other Chicago public schools calling for a ceasefire. And our entire educational system in blue states particularly is deeply, deeply corrupt. So that is problem number one. Problem number two is that colleges and universities, as we suggested yesterday, have become training grounds for activist leftists. That's all they are. They are staking their reputation on the continuing success of their hard science programs. And then on the basis of that success, they are creating essentially an adjunct left-wing activist training think tank. And that's what many of these colleges and universities are. I'll get to more on this in just one second. First, investing in your future it shouldn't be something you put off. That's why I'm always looking for new ways to diversify my portfolio. When I first started this business, I knew I had to be smart by putting my cash somewhere where it has the potential to grow and work hard for me. Well, Robinhood has changed the investment landscape and pioneered commission-free stock trading. Today, they offer innovative products to over 23 million funded customers to help users build that better financial future. With Robinhood, you're in the driver's seat. You have complete autonomy to make investments toward your future goals. 
Whether you're interested in long-term investing or you're just trying to beat inflation, Robinhood has the tools to help you pursue those goals. Robinhood could help you build a better financial future. Download the Robinhood app right now or visit Robinhood.com. With a gold membership, you could earn 5% APY on uninvested cash, get bigger instant deposits, and get access to professional research from Morningstar and real-time market data, plus so many more features. Download the Robinhood app or visit Robinhood.com. That's Robinhood.com or download that app right now to learn more. Investing involves risks and returns are not guaranteed. Other fees may apply. Robinhood Gold is offered through Robinhood Financial LLC and is a subscription offering premium services for a fee. Terms apply to the APY. Rate is subject to change. More info in the description of this podcast. But who's paying for the outside groups that are agitating? Well, we know the answer to that. According to the New York Post, George Soros has funneled more than $15 million since 2016 to groups behind pro-Hamas protests. That's not a surprise. George Soros is wildly anti-Israel. George Soros is, in fact, an anti-American left-wing radical. Meanwhile, a lawsuit has now been filed representing victims of the October 7th Hamas terror attack on Israel by the law firm Greenberg Traurig, which is a very famous law firm. They filed a lawsuit in the U.S. District Court for the Eastern Division of Virginia against AJP Educational Foundation, a.k.a. American Muslims for Palestine and National Students for Justice in Palestine. Many of these protests are operating via funding from those groups, which is why you see the same types of tents everywhere and the same types of signs and all the rest of this. The lawsuit seeks compensatory damages for nine American and Israeli victims of the attack and alleges that AMP and NSJP work in the United States as collaborators and propagandists for Hamas. The suit notes that both of these national student groups, pseudo student groups, are the current version of several prior entities that were already determined by the United States government to be supporters of Hamas. The lawsuit says that plaintiffs have been and continue to be injured because AMP and NSJP knowingly provide continuous, systematic, and substantial assistance to Hamas and its affiliates' acts of international terrorism. They say that AMP and NSJP are not merely organizing to assist Hamas's ongoing terror campaign abroad. They are intentionally extending their aid to fomenting chaos, violence, and terror in the United States. We also know that many of these universities are overtly funded by foreign powers. They are funded by nations like Qatar, that they receive funding from various other states in the Middle East that propagandize on behalf of Hamas and on behalf of Palestinian terrorism. That's where all of this is coming from. So if you have to take a side, why is it that the president of the United States cannot? So yesterday, Joe Biden finally made a long verbal statement about what's going on in America's college campuses. And he couldn't take a side as per his usual arrangement. So here is Joe Biden's complete statement. We're going to stop and start it and go through it because basically he is doing what Democrats have been doing this entire time since October 7th and really long before because you remember when Ilhan Omar vicious and virulent anti-Semite, was supposed to be condemned by the House. They said, well, we condemn all hate. And this is the usual formulation from the White House. We condemn anti-Semitism and also Islamophobia, which is completely irrelevant. It is completely irrelevant and unrelated. The only reason for linking those two things is to suggest that pro-Israel supporters are similarly Islamophobic the way that anti-Israel people are anti-Semitic in general. Doesn't mean every anti-Israel person in terms of Israel's policies is anti-Semitic. It means that the Venn diagram between people who hate Israel and people who hate Jews, those are concentric circles. In any case, here is, uh, here is Joe Biden's statement. Before I head to North Carolina, I wanted to speak a few moments about what's going on on our college campuses here. We've all seen the images, and they put to the test two fundamental American principles. Excuse me. <clears throat> The first is the right to free speech and for people to peacefully assemble and make their voices heard. The second is the rule of law. Both must be upheld. We are not an authoritarian nation where we silence people or squash dissent. The American people are heard. In fact, peaceful protest is in the best tradition of how Americans respond to consequential issues. But, but. Okay, let's pause you there for a second. Are- okay. And you'll notice that Joe Biden here is trying to break down this issue into an issue of free speech. Okay, this is really two issues. No one is arguing that moron students don't have the right to legally protest anything they want to. They can. This is also the same Joe Biden who declared that a protest in Charlottesville before it became violent 
was in fact an act of evil, depending on the viewpoint expressed at the protest. Joe Biden has no such words for the people who are literally protesting while shouting anti-Semitic slogans. He has no such words for those people, as we'll see. Neither are we a lawless country. <clears throat> we are a civil society. and order must prevail. Throughout our history, we've often faced moments like this because we are a big, diverse, free-thinking and freedom-loving nation. In moments like this, there are always those who rush in to score political points. But this isn't a moment for politics. It's a moment for clarity. So let me be clear. Peaceful protest in America. Violent protest is not protected. Peaceful protest is. It's against the law when violence occurs. Destroying property is not a peaceful protest. It's against the law. Vandalism, trespassing, breaking windows, shutting down campuses, forcing the cancellation of classes and graduations. None of this is a peaceful protest. Threatening people, intimidating people, instilling fear in people is not a peaceful protest. It's against the law. Dissent is essential to democracy. But dissent must never lead to disorder or to denying the rights of others so students can finish the semester and their college education. Look, it's basically a matter of fairness. It's a matter of what's right. There's the right to protest, but not the right to cause chaos. People have the right to get an education. Okay, so you can pause that for a second. Okay, so he's putting all his focus here. Why is he putting all his focus here? The reason he's putting all of his focus here is because this is an easy line for him to draw, for any politician to draw. Yeah, sure, you can carry a sign, but you're not allowed to break a window. Okay, that's an easy one. It's amazing that it's taken him this long to actually make a forceful statement about it. But we all know the reason for that. And that's because he sympathizes with many of the claims of the protesters, or at the very least, he doesn't want to offend them because he's afraid that if he does, he'll lose Dearborn, Michigan, and with it, the election. Which, by the way, is an idiotic idea. He can lose Dearborn and still win the election, but, you know, he is an idiot. We'll get to more on this in just a moment. First, there's nothing like sitting behind home plate at a baseball game or front row for your favorite concert. When you want the best, you need to act fast or somebody else will. They'll grab the ticket or if you're hiring, they will grab the applicant. You need to find the most talented people for your open roles before the competition scoops them up. So what's the best way to do that? ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter finds qualified candidates fast. Right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. Once you review ZipRecruiter's list of the most qualified candidates for your job, you can easily invite your top choices to apply to encourage them to apply sooner. Amp up your hiring performance with ZipRecruiter and find the best talent fast. See why four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within day one. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. Try it for free. Again, that is ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. ZipRecruiter is indeed the smartest way to hire. We've been using it here at Daily Wire for years. It's why we have such an amazing staff. Head on over to ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. Try it for yourself for free. There's a reason people get quality candidates within the first day. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. Again, ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. So here's the president continuing along these lines. You'll note at this point that these protests, which have been about anti-Semitism from day one, the first spate of these protests broke out between October 7th and Israel even retaliating against Hamas. But here is Joe Biden. We are now like a minute and a half into the statement. Joe Biden still has not mentioned anti-Semitism. When he does... You'll see what he does. As always, he will mealy mouth it. The right to get an education, the right to get a degree, the right to walk across the campus safely without fear of being attacked. But let's be clear about this as well. There should be no place on any campus, no place in America for anti-Semitism or threats of violence against Jewish students. There is no place for hate speech or violence of any kind, whether it's anti-Semitism Islamophobia or discrimination against Arab Americans or Palestinian Americans. It's simply wrong. Okay, There's pause no it right there. Place- that's, that's an amazing statement, right? Well, the protest that we're watching here is tens of thousands of students, many, if not most of whom, are perfectly fine with Jew hatred. Where are the mass protests in which there is violence done to Palestinians on every major college campus? Even at UCLA, what happened at UCLA is that the Palestinian pro-Palestinian students at UCLA were engaged in violent law-breaking at UCLA and people from the community around then similarly violated the law and got in a scrum with them. But across the country, what we are watching right now is a bunch of anti-Semitic people who are engaged in violence and intimidation. And even if they weren't engaged in violence and intimidation, if they were engaged in, say, white supremacist marches, do you think that Joe Biden would be ignoring it? 
or saying, you know, we, we don't like anything. We don't like white supremacy. And also we hate hatred against white people. You think he would be doing that? The reason he's splitting the baby, the reason he's being mealy mouth, the reason that every single democratic statement about anti-Semitism has to be paired with Islamophobia is to create a moral equivalence suggesting that being pro-Israel is anti-Arab or anti-Muslim in the same way that being pro-Hamas is anti-Semitic, which is an absurdity. But of course, that's Joe Biden's. He, he refuses to pick a side. In other words, as I said, at the very top, it's very easy to pick a side. And if Joe Biden picked a side, by the way, it would serve him well politically. He might alienate a few crazies on college campuses. Those crazies are going to vote for Cornell West or Jill Stein anyway. What he might do is buy back a position of moderation that he has lost throughout his dumb administration. But he won't do it. And he's going back to very bad people on both sides. Here we go. Wrong. There's no place for racism in America. It's all wrong. It's un-American. I understand people it's have strong wrong. feelings and deep convictions. In America, we respect the right and protect the right for them to express that. But it doesn't mean anything goes. It needs to be done without violence, without destruction, without hate, and within the law. You know, make no mistake, as president, I will always defend free speech. And I will always be just as strong in standing up for the rule of law. That's my responsibility to you, the American people. We know all of this is a lie. My obligation Okay, I'm sorry. Like, we don't need any more of this. When he says that he's going to stand up for free speech, let's remember, this is the same administration that put pressure on all of the social media companies to bar information they didn't like. This is the same exact administration that when he says he's going to protect rule of law, that has presided over the disintegration of rule of law in America's major cities. This is the Democratic Party that presided over that. The reason that he can't pick a side is because if he picks a side, he's either going to have to pick people who hate America or the people who like America. And there are too many people on his own side of the aisle who really hate America, who think America is deeply bad. Now, there are people on his side of the aisle, to be fair to Joe Biden, who legitimately are siding with the protesters. Among them is the communist, useless person, Bernie Sanders. A, a, a stain on American political history, Bernie Sanders. A, an absolute joke of a human being who's been elevated to relative power because he did the best thing any politician can do. He ran against Hillary Clinton. He says that all these people who are protesting, they're out there for the right reasons. They're out there for the right reasons. As they shout, globalize the Intifada. And as they deny the atrocities of October 7th. And as they wave Hamas flags. And burn American flags. They're out there for the right reasons, says Bernie. I think it's important to understand why these young people are out there. And they are out there for the right reasons. To protest U.S. Mm. continued military aid and money to a right-wing extremist Netanyahu government, which is in a destructive war against the Palestinian people. He is such a viciously disgusting human being, Bernie Sanders. The right-wing, it's a unity government. Every element that he says there is wrong. A war against the Palestinian people. I guess that's why they're shipping in 500 aid trucks a day, which, by the way, are being hijacked by Hamas as we speak. We'll get to more on this in a moment. First, a child's life is molded by his or her home, school, friends, community. A positive experience in these areas helps build a healthy kid. Cars for Kids, that's Cars with a K, is a registered nonprofit organization that gives children the tools to succeed in life. If you have a car that's just sitting in your driveway, taking up space, you should consider donating it to Cars for Kids. If you're tired of looking at that old car in your driveway or hearing your spouse complain about it, why not let Cars for Kids take care of it for you? Here's how it works. Visit their website at carsforkids.org slash Ben. Let them take it from there. The whole process only takes two minutes. Cars for Kids will schedule a pickup at a time that's convenient for you. If you don't have a car, you can still help. Cars for Kids accepts non-cash donations of school supplies, clothing, sports equipment, and more. We all have items sitting in the closets collecting dust. Donate those today. Make a better tomorrow for a kid in need. So what are you waiting for? Call now or visit carsforkids.org slash Ben. Get that ball rolling today. That's cars with a K. The number four, carsforkids.org slash Ben. You know them from the jingle, right? 1877 cars for kids. Go check them out right now. Carsforkids.org slash Ben. Literally, as we speak, the United States announced yesterday that Hamas managed to seize a major shipment of humanitarian aid that was delivered to Gaza from Jordan earlier this week after the supplies were the first to be shipped to the enclave through a newly reopened Israeli border crossing. But apparently, Israel is responsible for all this, according to Bernie Sanders. So the protesters, they're good now. They're good now. Of course, Bernie Sanders is fine with protesters hating America. That dude doesn't like America. He thinks America is systemically racist and systemically corrupt and the meritocracy is evil. What do you expect from a, from a 
adult who honeymooned in the Soviet Union. Or take Mark Lamont Hill, still a respected member of the credulous left, who's actively encouraging protesters to, quote, tear some bleep up on Jason Whitlock's show, of course. So to me, at the end of the day, no problem, no problem at all with disruption. Again, you don't have to tear up the whole university, but, but, but making the university uncomfortable is exactly uh, what you're supposed to do. And I'm a parent of a college student and I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm okay, I'm okay with it. Get your grades done, but tear some up too. Okay. Mark Lamont Hill, genius. Okay, or maybe you're like Chris Hayes over at MSNBC. And what you, you really sympathize with the flag burners, but you understand the optics are bad. So don't look at them. Don't look at them. Which is an amazing statement. I, I, I do love the look at them. They're so important. All their perspectives are so, oh my God, they're burning American flags. Don't look at them. That is the Chris Hayes routine here. Seriously, the scale of human suffering that's happening in Gaza doesn't mean you must come down on the side of the protesters. Certainly, there are many people who think the war is a brutal but necessary campaign for Israel's defense. What it does necessitate is that you weigh all the human suffering against the actual end game of the conflict that is currently being waged and is unarticulated as of now. A conflict the U.S. continues to support. Our humanity demands we focus on those questions first and last. Oh, first and last. So we shouldn't focus on the tens of thousands of American students who hate the country. We shouldn't focus on that like right here at home. We should ignore those people. By the way, again, he he's lying. Israel has made very clear its war aims, the complete destruction of Hamas's military capacity and the freeing of its hostages. That's been literally the game since day one, which is why I've, I've noticed that Chris Hayes has never called for a full scale surrender of Hamas to end this war. All of his pressure is brought to bear on Israel. Of course, of course. Now, again, this is actually not tough. The reason that Donald Trump is doing well in this election cycle is because Donald Trump understands this. So here's President Trump's response to these radical anti-American jack all over the country. Just so you understand, this is the radical left. This is a movement from the left, not from the right. The right is not your problem. Despite what like law enforcement likes to say, the FBI director said that he worries about the right. Now, don't worry about the right. The right's fine. Worry about the left, because this is a movement from the left. These are radical left lunatics. And they got to be stopped now because it's going to go on and on and it's going to get worse and worse. And, you know, they take over countries, okay? And we're not letting them take over the USA. We're not letting the radical left morons take over this country. You can't let that happen. Want to know why Donald Trump's up in the polls? Because that's correct. Because he's not just saying that Violence is bad. Yes, we all understand violence is bad. Unless, of course, it's Black Lives Matter protesters doing $2 billion in property damage. Then it's kind of okay. But he's actually saying their viewpoints are bad and wrong because their viewpoints are, in fact, bad and wrong. They may have a right to express those viewpoints. Those viewpoints are still bad and wrong. By the way, points to Donald Trump for truly understanding, like on a gut level, the conflict in the Middle East. There's a reason that it was under Donald Trump the Abraham Accords happened because he understands that this is a very morally clear situation in the Middle East. Israel is a liberal, democratic, free speech oriented, rights oriented state in the Middle East. And its enemies hate America, hate women, despise minorities, kill them, and wish to impose Sharia law and terrorism on everybody around them. Donald Trump understands that. You know who else understands that, by the way? All the various Muslim countries that don't give two craps about aspirations for Palestinian statehood and actually oppose them. It's only idiots like Joe Biden and his pro-Iran interior team that think somehow that a Palestinian state would be a boon to the region, which is why even the Saudis are like, can you stop talking to us about this? Like, we don't care about this. How do I know that Donald Trump gets it? He did an interview with Time Magazine and full, like real points for Donald Trump because President Trump gets it. Quote, most people thought the solution was going to be a two-state solution. I'm not sure a two-state solution anymore is going to work. Everybody was talking about two states. Even when I was there, I was saying, what do you like here? Do you like two states? Now people are going back to, it depends where you are. Every day it changes now. If Israel's making progress, they don't want two states. They want everything. And if Israel's not making progress, sometimes they talk about a two-state solution. Two-state solution seemed to be the idea that people like most, the policy or the idea that people liked above. He says, it depends when. There was a time when I thought two states could work. Now I think two states is going to be very tough. I think it's going to be much tougher to get. I think you have fewer people that like that idea. 
He said, children grow up. They are taught to hate Jewish people at a level nobody thought was possible. I had a friend, a very good friend, Sheldon Adelson, who felt it was impossible to make a deal because the level of hatred was so great. And I think it was much more so on one side than the other. The level of hatred of Jewish people was so great and taught from the time they were in kindergarten and before. He felt that and he was a great deal maker. He was a very rich man. He was a rich man because of his ability to make deals. And he loved Israel more than anything else. He loved Israel and he wanted to protect Israel. And he felt it was impossible to make a deal because of the level of hatred. And Time said, do you feel that way now? And Trump said, I disagreed with it. But so far, he hasn't been wrong. And then he added, by the way, if Israel and Iran got into a war, would you join in the Israeli side? He said, yes. Donald Trump has a level of moral clarity that is correct. Joe Biden does not. Donald Trump has picked the correct side in America and abroad. Joe Biden has sold out our allies everywhere he can find a way to do it. From Afghanistan to Ukraine to Israel and presumably in the future to Taiwan. And he will not take sides against the people who burn American flags and chant anti-American slogans and hate the country on the campus because he wouldn't want to alienate those people. All right, in just one second, we'll get to the latest on this anti-Semitism bill, which has drawn a lot of fire from both sides of the aisle. Some of it correct, a lot of it not. We'll get to that in a moment. First, ladies and gents, the time is nearly here. Sunday, May 12th, we at The Daily Wire are charting a brand new course with our inaugural animated series, Mr. Burcham. We're offering the series premiere absolutely free for everyone to watch exclusively at Daily Wire Plus. Mr. Burcham comes from the brilliant comedic mind of Adam Carolla. He's a junior high woodshop teacher who's holding the line against the onslaught of contemporary insanity. He's a throwback. He's hard-nosed. He's not about to let his nemesis, the rabid social justice warrior, Carponzi, dictate how he runs his classroom or his life. And of course, our friend and show creator, Adam Carolla, has assembled an unprecedented cast of talent for the series, including Roseanne Barr, Megan Kelly, Sage Steele, Danny Trejo, Kyle Dunnigan, Patrick Warburton, Tyler Fisher, and our very own Brett Cooper, plus a host of others. Take a look at the official Mr. Bertram trailer right now. Just tell me what you need. Jump into the first one. Rolling, speed, action. Sawbuck's looking a little chubby wubby. So I bought him some new food. It's organic and vegan. Uh, dogs are supposed to eat meat. They're descendants of wolves. You ever see a vegan wolf on the Nature Channel? I'm a vegan. <laughs> Coffee is for closers, ladies. Listen up! Hey, don't make this a prison hug. I'm a heteronormative, cisgendered white male. For which I apologize. I'm black, and that used to be enough. But I'm also bilingual, and I'm non-binary. We're the Army! We drink more before 9 a.m. than you Navy pukes do all day! He rubbed all the fur off his emotional support ferret. The damn thing looked like a four-legged penis! Charity and work. Two words that should never go together. Like women and opinions. I want a burly man. They're salty and make me dizzy. Sorry, I just need to find a thingy to fix my gaming chair. When I was on the construction site, my chair was a five-gallon bucket. It was also my toilet. <laughs> hey, I'm done. I'm going back to bed. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Get ready for the sharp, incisive comedy that only Adam Carolla and The Daily Wire could conjure up. Don't miss out on the series premiere streaming free on Sunday, May 12th at 9 p.m. Eastern only at Daily Wire Plus. Also, this Sunday, we have a fabulous Sunday special episode with Abigail Schreier. Abigail is famous for having written a book about rapid onset gender dysphoria that the left hated so much they banned basically from Amazon. Now she has a brand new book titled Bad Therapy about how basically treating our kids as little experimentation labs for therapists has wrecked them. Here is a little bit of what the episode looks like. Parents who are so desperate not to say no to their kids are, are now outsourcing this problem to the therapy profession. The school counselors, uh, the school psychologists um, were so undermining parents' confidence in their, they, they weren't trusting themselves. And in fact, since I've written the book, I am inundated with letters from parents thanking me that they don't have to feel guilty anymore when they punish a child for bad behavior. See, the therapeutic experts had so convinced them that they would traumatize the kid if they took away their smartphone or engaged in any other discipline, that parents were afraid to do it. That is available on Sunday, so stay tuned there, or it's available a day early if you become a member over at Daily Wire Plus. Okay, so meanwhile, big controversy has broken out over this anti-anti-Semitism bill the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act of 2023. Now, I talked about this at length yesterday, and I talked about why I have problems with the bill. What the bill seeks to do 
is expand Title VI protections, sort of, definitionally. So Title VI, as we discussed yesterday on the show, and if you want a full breakdown of, of the actual issue and why I think that the bill is a bad idea, you should listen to yesterday's show. But the very short version of that is that Title VI of the Civil Rights Act prevents discriminatory environments from existing on college campuses on the basis of race, ethnicity, and the like. The problem with that is, of course, it's incredibly vague. So I have problems with Title VI in general. What this act sought to do was make sure that anti-Semitism was covered by Title VI. It used the definition from the International Holocaust Remembrance Association, the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism, as advisory. The reason that I think this is kind of a problem is because it's a pretty broad definition, the IHRA definition. You can quibble with some of the wording in the IHRA definition. And beyond that, I don't think that expanding the reach of Title VI is actually the solution. I think the actual solution for Congress is just to defund these universities because they're left-wing think tanks and activist training centers. Just defund them. Just defund various crap departments that are completely useless. Restructure the universities. Stop giving federal aid to people to study gender studies at Columbia. It's dumb. That would be the actual answer. And of course, arrest and prosecute people who violate the law. That would be the actual answer to a lot of this. Allow universities to have their own student codes of conduct that they then enforce. Okay, but... One of the claims that's being made is that this bill somehow makes unlawful Christianity. That is not what this bill does. Anybody who's claiming that is lying to you. The bill, again, I oppose the bill because I think that it is overbroad and because I don't think you should use the tools of Title VI to expand those tools any more than I think the DEI should be expanded to, quote unquote, cover Jews. DEI is bad in its essence and should be destroyed. This bill does not ban Christianity or the New Testament or anything like that. I know that because I've read the bill. And because I know things like the law and how English works. So what the bill does, the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act of 2023, it is designed to effectively give a definition to anti-Semitism in an advisory capacity such that Title VI can be applied to cover Jews. So here's what it says. In reviewing, investigating, or deciding whether there has been a violation of Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 on the basis of race, color, or national origin based on an individual's actual or perceived shared Jewish ancestry or Jewish ethnic characteristics, the Department of Education shall take into consideration the definition of anti-Semitism as part of the department's assessment of whether the practice was motivated by anti-Semitic intent. So as part of it, but not dispositive. In other words, if the IHRA definition says that a thing is probably motivated by anti-Semitism, Take that into account just because if you don't know anything about anti-Semitism, you can look to the definition and maybe that gives you a clue. But it's not this positive. It doesn't answer the question. And what's more, the act explicitly says, quote, nothing in this act shall be construed to commit to diminish or infringe upon any right protected under the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. Also, nothing in this act shall be construed to expand the authority of the Department of Education or to alter the standards pursuant to which the Department of Education makes a determination that harassing conduct amounts to actionable discrimination, or to diminish or infringe upon the rights protected under any other provision of law that is in effect as the date of enactment of this act. In other words, we're not violating the First Amendment. If this comes into conflict with the First Amendment, it shouldn't be applied in that way. The act itself says that. So all of the claims that this is intended to, say, like do away with Christianity, and you're right. 200, 200 Republicans voted to do away with Christianity, nailed it. Again, I can think the bill's a bad idea. And I do think the bill's a bad idea. And I think there are much better means to quash the leftist agitation on America's college campuses than, than this bill. Also, like at a certain point, you might want to actually read the bill and what it says, as opposed to doing a dumb thing where you read three words out of context and then ignore the rest of the clauses of the bill. And if you want my specific critiques, of the IHRA definition of anti-Semitism, listen to yesterday's show. I go through it in detail. And meanwhile, on the free speech issue, Elon Musk is meanwhile under fire because he has decided to bring back self-declared anti-Semite Nick Fuentes. Fuentes has uh, been not on the service since 2021. And Elon had said in the past that he didn't want to bring back Fuentes. And I had actually advocated that Fuentes be unbanned, despite the fact that Fuentes obviously has personal problems with me and really, really hates Jews and the like. And so Elon Musk put out a statement saying, very well, he will be reinstated provided he does not violate the law and let him be crushed by the comments and community notes. It is better to have anti-whatever out in the open to be rebutted than grow simmering in the darkness. Hey, well, you know, I agree with him on principle. On points, he's right. Right? 
Elon says, I cannot claim to be a defender of free speech, but then permanently ban someone who hasn't violated the law, no matter how much I disagree with what they say. This will probably cause us to lose a lot of advertisers. It makes me sad, but a principle is a principle. So good for him. Good for him. Again, I I think that he's, Nick Fuentes routinely says terrible things all the time, including directly targeting me and, and, you know, violently threatening me on a show by like stabbing a knife into the desk and, and talking about running me down in Grand Theft Auto and all that, whatever. I don't care. Still free speech, so long as he's not actively violently inciting. And so bringing him back to to X, will it make X less usable? Just in terms of not having your mentions filled with garbage? Sure. Also, that's not what X is there to do. It's not there to prevent your mentions from becoming unusable. Elon bought it to open up free speech, and he should, in fact, reinstate Nick Fuentes, as much as I think Nick Fuentes is a terrible human being with uh, particularly odious views. We'll get to more on this in a moment. First, can your savings weather another economic storm? Think about what you've put away for the future. Inflation can render cash worthless. Real estate could crash. It did in 2008. During times of economic uncertainty or market volatility, investors tend to flock to gold as a safe haven asset. Its value tends to increase during turbulent times, providing a buffer against market downturns. This is why people are flocking to gold right now. It's why Birch Gold is busier than ever. Birch Gold understands that navigating financial decisions can be really daunting. That's why their dedicated in-house IRA department is there to guide you every step of the way. Birch Gold is committed to addressing your questions and concerns promptly. Their team is always ready to provide answers and clarity. Whether it's about fees, taxes on rollovers, or the timing of the process, they're here to ensure you feel valued and well-informed. Text Ben to 989898 to talk to one of Birch Gold's experts and claim your free info kit on gold. You'll learn how to convert an existing IRA or 401k into a tax-sheltered IRA in gold. The best part is, it's not going to cost you a penny out of pocket. Just text Ben to 989898 right now. Again, text Ben to 989898 to get started. Text Ben to 989898. Get in touch with my friends over at Birch Gold. Okay, meanwhile, the Biden campaign is having a very rough time of it. Joe Biden can't go a day without insulting someone or doing something unbelievably dumb. So the other day, he likened Japan and India to Russia and China. Again, it is very dangerous to be an ally of the United States while Joe Biden is in office. According to the New York Times, for months, President Biden has been under pressure to prove he can be tough at the border. But at a campaign reception on Wednesday night, he tried to voice his commitment to America's long history of immigration. And he did so by taking a swipe at Japan and India. He said they are struggling economically, quote, because they're xenophobic. He said the two democratic countries, along with China and Russia, don't want immigrants. He said immigrants are what makes us strong. Uh, say what now? So India, a little diverse, the country, the the world's most populous country, India, also an ally of the United States, a democratic ally, so is Japan, likening them to China and Russia because you want to make a point about how we should have open borders. That's a hell of a take. Very strong stuff there from the president of the United States who is just, he's just ridiculous. By the way, I should point out that in 2022, India's GDP, growth, India's GDP growth rate in 2022 was 7.2%. The United States' is was 1.9% under Joe Biden in 2022. Oops. All right, so as we were talking about Joe Biden, that dude insulted Japan and India for no apparent reason, just as like a side swipe, which is a ridiculous thing. Uh, and um, this necessitated that Karine Jean-Pierre tried to do cleanup for uh, on aisle five. Joe has now soiled his bed again. The night nurse has to come in. She's not good at her job. Here we go. Uh, the, the president last night described uh, Japan as xenophobic, along with China and Russia. Was that intentional? And, and, and it does does the president want to apologize to Japan? I think the broader uh, the the broader the broader case that he was trying to make, which I think most uh, most most leaders and allies across the globe understand, is he sh- he was trying he was saying that um, when it comes to um, when it comes to uh, when it comes to who we are as a nation, we are a nation of of immigrants. That is in our DNA. And uh, and so and you've heard the president say this, and you've heard us say it more as administration. It's in, it makes us better. Uh, we are stronger for it because of the fact that in our DNA we are a, a nation of immigrants. And I think that's probably very important to note as well. Well, um, that did not clarify anything. So thanks for that. I'm sure that Japan and India feel much better about the president of the United States insulting them for being xenophobes. Joe Biden is running a terrible reelect campaign, which is why he is in bad shape right now. CNN's Harry Enten is saying as much. He is breaking down the fact that the Biden campaign seems to think that they're going to win solely based on abortion. And he's saying, "Uh, I'm looking at the stats and I don't see it. So, all right, you see this 14 point lead for Joe Biden. 
but will abortion be important for votes for folks in their voting pattern? So in our new CNN poll, abortion affect your vote for major offices. Candidates must share your views. Only 23 percent, John, only 23 percent of Americans say that candidates must share your views on abortion. So even if they agree with Joe Biden, it doesn't necessarily mean they vote for him. And more than that, John, when we look at the top issues, the nation's most urgent issues, look where abortion is on this list. It's all the way down at 5 percent. The issues that are at the top of this list are immigration and the economy, which, of course, are Donald Trump's best issue. This is a problem for Joe Biden. The biggest problem, of course, for Joe Biden is that his economy continues to sputter along. Inflation is just continuing to destroy everyone. Over the course of his term, wages have not kept up with inflation. The stock market is kind of bouncing around a little bit because nobody knows exactly what the Federal Reserve is going to do. And Biden is still speaking talking points from like 10 years ago. So here's Joe Biden talking about infrastructure week. How many votes is Joe Biden going to win based on infrastructure bills? Seriously. Like when people think infrastructure under Joe Biden, do you think about the infrastructure bill or do you think about a derailed train in East Palestine, Ohio and a bridge collapsing in Baltimore? Truly, which one do you think about? Here's Joe Biden trying to pitch himself on infrastructure. You may recall that my predecessor promised infrastructure week so every single week for four years. <laughs> he didn't build a damn thing. <laughs> Nothing. No, I'm serious. Well, he did, build, he did build some wall, as it turns out, a wall that you then stopped building because it might actually close the border. So he did, he did do that. Meanwhile, he, uh, he continues to rail about trickle-down economics. These, these talking points ain't going to work. You're the president of the United States. If you're sick and tired of trickle-down economics, who owns the economy? Go for it, dude. You know, this progress is part of my vision for an economy that grows from the middle out and the bottom up, not just the top down. I'm sick and tired of trickle-down economics. Um, well, I mean, good news for you then. Then trickle-down economics is not yours, and this is your economy. So, I mean, I guess that trickle-down economics would be better than whatever it is that you've created. Meanwhile, President Trump, I got to tell you, him being in court has meant that he's run a much more disciplined campaign. This was my going theory, is that unintentionally, the fact that Donald Trump is not on Twitter and the fact that Donald Trump is in court all day is really good for his campaign. Because it means that he has like five minutes in front of the cameras. And in those five minutes, he says good things. And then he goes down to like a bodega in New York or a construction site and poses with blue collar people and then goes back to court. And he's putting out statements on Truth Social and nobody's on Truth Social except for Donald Trump. So that means that the messages from Donald Trump that tend to pervade are ones like this. Here he goes going off on, on inflation. So uh, that's uh, on the economy. It looks... Uh, pretty bleak for interest rates. And uh, this I don't think there's any way they can cut them because inflation is very... Uh, inflation, remember, is a country buster. When you have inflation, that breaks countries. I mean, literally breaks countries. And we can't take that chance. So we'll see what they do. But uh, it was sort of announced yesterday they can't do much with the interest rates. They'll have to remain very high. And it's very unfortunate. We had low interest rates. They have high interest rates. Uh, that's uh, very unfortunate. Well, I mean, he's not wrong about that. And all he has to do is keep saying that over and over and over. And he will be president again. All righty, coming up, we are going to do a week in review. We're going to get into the hottest stories of the week and deconstruct some culture. If you're not a member, become a member. Use Code Shapiro. Check out for two months free on all annual plans. Click that link in the description and join us.